Rockville Center resident and Southside High School senior William Rizzuto was recently appointed to the United States Air Force Academy in Colorado Springs, Colorado. He was one of eight Long Island appointees to this year's class, recently recognized and congratulated at an appointee event at the Milleridge Inn in Cherico. I've always thought about uh, going to a military academy, but since junior year, well, I didn't want to go to the Army. Um, and as far as Navy, I, I don't like open water. I'm afraid of open water, so it had to be Air Force. I feel good, and I'm looking forward to basic training. And not really the going so early, but I'm prepared for it. So, Other than grades, I just tried to um, do my best in the sports that I was in and tried to do extra curricular activities as much as possible. Uh, I was a lifeguard. I worked with uh, special needs kids in my high school and outside of high school, so that was most of the stuff that I did. I'm ready to serve my country. That's it. That's all I can say about that. Lieutenant Colonel Shorten Fielding from Rockville Center is the Air Force liaison officer who helped Rizzuto apply to the academy. I'm rather proud of uh, William, it's William Thomas uh, Rizzuto. I'm rather proud of him because he comes from the same town that I do. In fact, I've had a pleasure of a number of uh, students both in Rockville Center and in Oceanside that have uh, made it into the academy. And when you see the people from your own town doing this, it, all I can say is a sense of personal pride, you know, our people did it. And when you think of what these young people have gone through in order to reach the pinnacle, if you will, of uh, their high school education and then being appointed to the academy, um, you're amazed because you don't hear about them so often in the press. They don't get the recognition that they deserve. You hear about all the other ones that have fallen by the wayside. And I know that the parents feel extremely proud of them. Some of them are worried about them. And I've used the term many times, it's as though you're taking the cloth. It's a completely different world that they're going into. After a while, they're going to get used to it. It's a very, very proud feeling you have. Um, it's, it's hard to put into words at times, it just sort of builds up inside of you. And it's taken a while for myself and I think for the other officers that are involved in this. Um, there's a sense of though you're accomplishing something, the people that you're bringing in to replace yourself are dedicated. They've got that fire in the belly, if I use a term, that will make them good officers. And I think you'll find if you question any of these young men and women in here, it, there's a sense of apprehension. No matter how much we tell them about it, no matter how much they see the movies and so on, up until the point they cross that yellow line out at Colorado Springs, I have no idea at all what's in for them. And I think this is extremely important, especially in today's world, where this country cannot afford to have substandard performers anywhere in its operations. Um, I don't know, I just feel proud to be part of this team. It's that inner drive I look forward uh, to seeing in, in the individuals that I interview. Um, there's the desire and the, the commitment to the community. Uh, William has this. Um, he gets involved. He goes to help people. Uh, these are things I consider um, signs of officership when you take the individuals who are not performing well and bringing them forward along with the rest of the people, leaving nobody out. This is exactly what I see in these students that I've had the privilege of interviewing. They're caring for their uh, community members, their involvement in the community, involvement in the church, synagogue, uh, temple, whatever the case may be. These people give back to the community, which is something that they ask us all to do. Um, we are part of an extremely large community, and it's our involvement with these people that makes our job uh, so much better and I think contributes to what you see in today's world where there's a strong pro-military feeling in this country. Uh, these are young men and women. These are your sons, our daughters, and uh, they are they're given of themselves. They're given their lives in many cases, God forbid, but it does happen. <coughs> and they are, <coughs> they just stand out. That There's just something special about them. And uh, I know I go home and when I see my wife, I tell her, Meg, I've just met this young man or this young woman, and by God, these are the things that they've accomplished. And in this case, in William's case, um, he's done it for my community. 
And that, again, is another source of pride. This is one of our guys. And when people ask, who is he? I said, well, he's an Air Force Academy grad, or he's in the Air Force. Oh, really? And I said, yes. And the first thing that comes to people's mind is the education, um, the training that they're going to receive. And uh, every once in a while, you find a young uh, brother or sister coming up and asking you, you know, would you come back to see us again? I said, I'd be more than happy to <laughs> if your parents let me in the house. But it's a, um, <clears throat> it's a sense of service. And it's very, very strong. I use the case my sons. One's a police officer. The other is an Air Force officer. And it's service before self, which is something that we proposed here in, this, in the academy. Malloy College history professor Dr. Charles Howlett is also an Air Force liaison officer. He gave the keynote address at the event. What stands out is their leadership, their character, and their commitment to serve their nation. These are exceptionally intelligent young men and women who serve their communities after school, who participate in extracurricular activities, whether it's presidents of clubs, school organizations, and many of them are also outstanding athletes. They represent the holistic person, their ability to do many different things and do them well. And that's what the academies are looking for, young men and women that not only understand the importance of academics, but are willing to take the challenge and live up to the honor code that separates them from many others in terms of their ability to be honest and their willingness to serve. And in this day and age, when so many men, young men and women are concerned about entitlements, these are the people that are willing to take the risk, make the sacrifice for selfless service. And in the long run, our country will be far better off with these types of individuals when it's their turn to lead this nation. They're going to have to pull up their bootstraps. They're going to have to knuckle under. They're going to find the challenge difficult each day. But they'll persevere because these are exceptional young men and women who wanted the challenge, and indeed they will be challenged, but they'll be better for it in the end. Chris Kalora reporting.